with me. Turn your Bibles, if you would, please, to Revelation chapter 1. Find that verse, I'll read two verses there, verses 17 and 18, and then find 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll be reading from there. I was, yesterday, I was with a friend of mine, and his mother passed away, and um, he, she went to the hospital, and they run some tests on her, and just had her in there in the hospital. She just got an infection, had nothing to do with the COVID or anything. She just got an infection and died. And uh, in talking with him, he's concerned and about uh, what is life after this life. And I, I'm very interested in and have been ever since I got saved because I know one thing, I'm going to heaven one of these days. And knowing that, uh, I want to know what it's going to be like. And every once in a while I get in the Bible and I get to study and, and over the years I've, I've been with so many people that's died in this life and gone on and, and listened to the families and talking to them and there's always this question where are they at now what's going on now what kind of bodies uh, do they have I'm, I'm amazed how many people think that when a person dies he's like a ghost or or you know like friendly Casper the friendly ghost or something they're just flying around on a cloud somewhere and that's not true and uh, so what I want to do this morning because I got such a joy out of studying this that I, I want it to be uh, to you today uh, what kind of what will the resurrected body be like now turn with me first of all to Revelation chapter 1 I'll read 2 verse, so verse 17 and verse 18 and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and how the keys of hell and of death pray with me please Heavenly Father in these next few moments Lord if there's one thing we look forward to it's have some this body present with the Lord but Lord there's a lot it's unknown about the journey in between it's a lot that's unknown about what life is all about after this life. I know we're going there. I know we're going to have a life after this life. No doubt in my mind about that. No doubt in the Word of God about that. But there's so many unknowns about it to us that we'd ask you to let the Holy Spirit explain from thy Word to us today these wonderful truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians. And I want to begin to read uh, in verse 22 and verse 23. For as in Adam all die. Now, before we go any further, let me explain something to you. Uh, a lot of people think they're going to live forever. I was talking to Jacob this morning. And, uh, he said, I'm five foot and I forgot how to talk. He said, and, and bulletproof. I said, no, you ain't. You're going to die. <laughs> and when I was his age, I thought I was, you know, five foot nine and a half. I got him by a half inch, and I was bulletproof too. Ronnie Booth always hit me when we were playing golf and scared on. He said, yeah, you always thought you was five foot ten and bulletproof, but you're not, preacher. And uh, I got news for you. Uh, the Bible says, notice, for in Adam all die. So now, one thing we got to understand from the beginning is, if Jesus doesn't come back soon, everybody's going to die. Amen? Now, does that bother you? Does that scare you? Well, it, it scares me to this sense. There's a lot I don't know. The unknown. I don't like the unknown. I... Uh, uh, I went swimming one time, and I can't swim. I, you know, I put on a belt, one of them little floating belt things, and I was in 
uh, what they call the blue, uh, it's a big old uh, spring, blue springs up close to Swanee River. And as you go out over that, it's, it's shallow and beautiful. You can't even, you can see right down to the bottom, you have fish, everything, it's so clear. But boy, when you get out there over that hole and it looks down in that ground, and I thought to myself, I wonder what's down there. <laughs> you know, you don't know what's down there. And it's a frightening thing to me. Of course, a lot of people die down there and they just enjoy it. Now, I'm not one of them kind of guys. And so there's a lot of things that scare me, the unknown. And, uh, but uh, when you get in the Bible and you think about this matter of death, the Bible explains a great deal of it. And you can get that assurance, you can get that peace of mind, you get excited about uh, absent this body, present with the Lord, and great things to look forward to. Now, I'm no hurry to die. Now, don't you get that? But uh, I know I'm going to. And in one sense, I'm looking forward to it. Because the Bible has much to say about the joy that's going to be on the other side. Amen? So notice verse 22 again. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Now it's a fact that Jesus Christ our Lord came forth from the grave. Amen? In complete victory over death. It's the first fruits of them to sleep. He alone could make the statement of Revelation chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Look at it with me, please. Verse 17. And if Christ be not, no, I'm sorry, in Revelation uh, chapter uh, 1 and verse... Uh, Seventeen and eighteen, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his hand on me and said unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive evermore. Amen. And here's what I want you to see: and how the keys of hell and of death. Jesus is the only one that holds the keys of hell and death, and because he rose again. We are, as believers, have the assurance of our resurrection. Some no golden daybreak, we're going to go be with the Lord. Now watch this. The very cornerstone of our faith is the resurrection doctrine in. Our faith and future hope is based upon this very fact. In 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 14, says, And if Jesus be not risen... Then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. And in verse 17 says, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. So, to lose faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is to cut the very heart of the Bible out of the, uh, to the, the foundation of our spiritual homes. Many are the questions that come into our mind about the resurrection. And to many of these questions we have the Bible answer. But others will have to wait until we get to heaven and God will explain it all to us. Now, but the question is, what will the resurrected body be like? First of all, there's no such thing as reincarnation. That is the belief that you come back in some future life as an animal or a bird or some other form. And every time I think about this, I think about a visit I made one time. And this lady that I got to meet on that visit, I knocked on her door. And she, I said, could I come in and talk to you about the Lord? And she said, uh, I believe in reincarnation. I said, well, praise the Lord, I do too. And she said, well, come on in then. I went on in. She had big maps laid out of all the universe. And, I, and in the universe, here's this one little planet out there she showed me. And that's where I'm coming back as a butterfly. And I said, yeah, and I'm coming back as a bird and eat you up. <laughs> and I said, that's not the kind of reincarnation I'm talking about. I'm talking about I believe in the reincarnation, but I'm going to have a brand new body in Christ Jesus. Amen. This old body I'm going to lay down one of these days and I'm going to get a brand new body. 
Now, there is no such thing as spiritual resurrection. That is the belief that the body will never come forth again from the earth. To believe this is deny that man is made in the very image of God. Now remember something. We're made in the very image of God. We're a trinity. Body, soul, spirit. If the body is never redeemed, then the bodily image of God is destroyed. But our bodies will be resurrected. And redemption of my mortal body shall become immortal. Now watch this. The Bible records Jesus' resurrection in body. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. Matthew 27, verse 51 through 53. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18. This, all of these verses and many more records the resurrection bodily of the Lord Jesus Christ. No fact of life will so help us then as this blessed hope. The hope of the resurrected softens the sting of death, gladdens the heart of the bereaved with hope of reunion. You know what? I preached my daddy's funeral. I preached my mother's funeral, my grandpa, and all. There's a lot of my kin people up there in the edge of Alabama's funerals, and I, my little grandbaby, and I could go on and on, mention many funerals that I have preached, and I've stood over them, and I said, one of these days, I'm going to see them again. Amen. I didn't lose hope. I know I'm going to see them again. Now watch something. What I'm talking about when we understand the resurrection, resurrection of the body, that strengthens our hope. Now there are some seven statements in 1 Corinthians 15 that sets forth what our resurrected bodies will be like. Number one, go with me now to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and look with me in verse 40. Verse 40. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Now watch this. The resurrected body then is to be celestial. Now just what does that mean when you, when you talk about the body? Dr. H.R. Arnstein, Arnstein said uh, about this verse 40, there are celestial bodies that is heavenly bodies, and bodies terrestrial, that is earthly bodies. Our Lord Jesus came into this world and took a terrestrial body. But after having made satisfaction for our sins on the cross, he came forth in resurrection in a celestial body. And in that body, he ascended through the heavens into the very presence of God, where the Bible says he ever liveth to make intercession for us. His celestial body is a pattern of what ours with him will be. We shall have bodies in resurrection that are not subject to the laws that control us now then. Now this celestial body of ours will be like angels, an eternal body. It does not reproduce as human bodies. This body never grows old and becomes sick. The laws of time, space, gravity will lose its power over this celestial body. This body can be transplanted as rapidly as mental thought can be transplanted now. It can enter through closed doors as Jesus did. Although celestial, it is more the less physical and literal. Jesus could be seen. He could be felt. He enjoyed food. He fellowship with his disciples. The life-giving power of the terrestrial earthly body is the blood which flows through our veins. Leviticus 17 and verse 11. But the life-giving power of the celestial body, heavenly body, will be the spirit. This heavenly body will be bloodless body. Blood suggests that which sooner or later becomes corrupt. Now watch. The spirit body is eternal and will never become corrupt. Romans 8 verse 11. So it shall be, be life-giving and life-sustaining power of the spirit which shall dwell in the celestial heavenly body. 
The Bible makes it very plain that when you become a child of God, the, the Holy Spirit enters your body. And the Bible says that that Holy Spirit of God will never leave you. You ever hear somebody said he died alone? Not if you're a child of God. You never die alone. You know why? The Holy Spirit is in you. He will never, never leave you. And so he will be our power in the next life ahead of us. Number two, the resurrected body will be incorruptible. Now go back with me to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 in verse 42. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now, we mortals today cannot fathom anything incorruptible. You think about it. When you say this word incorruptible, it means it lasts forever. It can't corrupt. You buy a car today, a brand new car, and it deteriorates. You buy a house, it deteriorates. Uh, you name anything you want to. In this world today, it can be brand new one minute, and the next minute it begins to deteriorate. I asked my doctor one of the years and years ago, Dr. McGeechee, with our family doctor, I said, Doc, when does a body begin to die? He said, the moment it's born. The moment that body is born, it begins to die. You think about that. Everything that we know of, everything that you see on this earth today is dying all the time. It's corruptible. But the Bible says in verse 42 that we're going to receive an incorruptible body. And the blessed hope is found in 1 Corinthians 25. Now, in 15, in verse 25. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Amen? You know what Jesus did for you and I when he died on the cross? He destroyed death. It's gone. I'm talking about for you and I. I might die in this body, but I'll never die in spirit and soul. I'm alive forevermore. Now, the resurrected body will know no sickness. It will know no disease, no old age, no blindness, uh, no uh, 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 wrinkles, no corrupted period. I was reading in the book of Revelation one day, you know, our age and saying that just reading along and I got to think about will it be any babies in heaven and I got to say well wait a minute now if there's babies in heaven that means you got to grow old well is it going to be old men in heaven if it is I'd like to have a unwrinkled body wouldn't you in a brand new body and so I, I got to question myself now I wonder what it's going to be like then and I asked my doctor again I said doc when is the prime of life of a human being? Guess what he told me? 30 years old. Did you know that Jesus died on the cross when he was 33? Of what, 33, I believe it was? Right in the prime of life. Isn't that something? I don't know, but we just might be all 30 years old when we get to heaven. What a joy that would be one more time. Amen? You think about that for just a minute. But I, I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't understand about that. But there's a lot of things I do know about that. There's not going to be any death there. Not going to be any disease there. Not going to be any wrinkles there. No corruption there. We're going to have an incorruptible body. The resurrected body is to be a body of glory. Look at verse 43. <clears throat> it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Now, although our soul and spirit is saved, this terrestrial earthly body is one of dishonor. We have to bring this body into subjection every moment of our life, every day of our life. We are called on by God to die daily. This flesh is, to, is prone to sin. It is not perfect. Evil is always with us. I told my wife the other day, she's uh, talking to me, and I said, you don't understand, you're talking to perfection here. 
She said, I don't think so. <laughs> Amen. And I got news for you. There ain't nobody perfect in this world. But we're going to be one day. Now watch this. This, our celestial body, heavenly body, will be fashioned like under the glorious resurrected body of the Lord Jesus. Now look at verse 49 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Now, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. And look with me in verse 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the Son of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall be, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You want to know what life's going to be like after death? Study the life of Jesus after he rose from the dead. And you'll find out something that was true. Notice something. The resurrected body then, it'll be like Jesus. It shall be greater in glory than anything you can imagine. Your mind can't even conceive what the heavenly body is going to be like. What a glory. The resurrected body is one of power. Now go back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 43. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Now, these bodies now are weak and lowly. The celestial, heavenly body is to have, number one, power over space. It can be transplanted instantly over miles. Jesus it was. Power over time. A thousand years in heaven is nothing. Power over sickness. Isaiah 32 verse, 33 verse 24 says, And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Disease is conquered. Hospitals are out of business. Doctors, no more we need them. Amen? Sickness, no more. Think about that. The resurrected body is to be a spiritual body. Now go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 44. It is on a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. In other words, I'm going to lay down this natural body that the earth is going back to, but it's going to be raised a spiritual body. Now, notice what is what we, when we talk about a spiritual body, a spiritual body is not a body made of spirit. God is a spirit and is not spirit said to have a body. He took a body when the Lord Jesus Christ became incarnate. Colossians 2, 9. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But you and I are, are, are spirits each dwelling in a body. But we are not all spirit. We're also soul. 1 uh, Thessalonians 5, 23. I pray God in your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me show you something. When you look at me standing here today, all you see is my body. But there's three of me standing here. I got a body on the outside. I got a spirit and a soul on the inside. Now watch 1 Thessalonians 5. I pray God in your whole spirit and body and soul. The soul is a seat of my emotional nature. The seed of my natural instincts as a man, it is my human self. The spirit is the highest part of my nature to which God can make himself known according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. As a Christian, I ought to be controlled by my spirit, but instead most of the time I find myself being controlled by my soul and I am more or less a creature of emotions. This is called a natural body. The spirit is willing to do certain things, but the flesh is weak. The body being a soulish body is a hindrance to the spirit. But the celestial body will be dominated by the spirit. Then we will be nothing, uh, be nothing to hinder the full expression of the spirit 
and I shall be absolutely subject to God then. Now, let me tell you something. Did you know what the desire of every Christian that I know today that is, that is a real Christian that wants to be pleasing to God, he wants to please the Lord? Amen? Don't you want to please the Lord as a Christian? I do. I'm talking about in thought, in mind, everything about me. I want to please the Lord. Lord, let me please you. In fact, when I first got saved, I found out that I was a sinner saved by grace. I wasn't perfect. And I went out and done some things I shouldn't. And, and the Holy Spirit dealt with me about it. And I said, Lord, why didn't you just kill me when you first saved me and take me on to heaven? I'd be better off. And God said, no, I got you here for a purpose. And he let me know that. But I got news for you. I'm still in this thing. I'm still in this body, and I have to continue with it every day. But I really, with my mind and my soul and my spirit, I want to please God and everything, but I find myself coming short of it every day. But thanks be unto God, one of these days I'll please the Lord forevermore. Now, verses 45 and verse 46. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, Adam, was, making a quick, was made a quickening spirit. How be? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Now, so 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, 46, further talks about the resurrected body is to be a heavenly body. Now, verse 47 and verse down through verse 49. The first man is the earth earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they are also are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Amen? You think about that for just a minute. I'm going to be like God one day. Amen? I'm going to be like the Lord one day. I sure not right now. But I'm going to be. And what a day to think about. We'll be like the second man, Jesus, from heaven. No two people are, are exactly alike here. And they won't be there either. We'll all have incredible bodies like Jesus. We'll all be different. Remember Matthew chapter 17? Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. They knew Jesus as a man. They knew Moses as he was. They knew Elijah as he was. And the Bible says, and so shall we. Amen. I, I, that was a heavenly scene. That was a scene of heaven. And what's going on up there? And when, they, when I realized that they knew one another, I said, thank God he didn't make us all uh, just alike. Amen. He made us different. And you know what? I love different personalities. Some are aggravating to live with, but uh, I love them anyhow. You know, I'm so glad we're not all just alike. Amen. Yeah, we, we, I, I just like the way some people laugh, and I like the way some people do things, and the way they have personalities is different. And I'll tell every parent here today, and you listen to me, this is one of the most important, I can think, I can tell you as a parent, if you have more than one child in your family, you better learn to understand something. They're not all the same. But I love them the same. They're different. But you love them for what they are. Amen? God made us different. And I thank God for that. And I had to learn that. When my first child was born, I thought she was a little angel. Found out she wasn't. And, I've, and then I had another one. And I found out she was different. And he was different. Had a boy. And I found out something. Now, uh, my little angel is not like the second one that come along, my little boy. And I found out my third is not like either one of them. And I said, oh, well, I love my first one more than I love that. No, no. I tried my best and I had to learn to love them exactly the same because they were different. Isn't it wonderful? When we get to heaven, we're all going to be different. We're all going to be one another just like we are down here. Listen, 
the resurrected body is to be immortal. Now look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Now let me, let me say something before I go any further. It's a mystery. You know what a mystery is? It's an unrevealed truth at the time. I don't know everything about it. Amen? Right now. Watch it. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the morning, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised into corruptible, and we shall be changed. And this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Here's the mystery. Did you know that if I died this morning, you go out yonder and you put me in the ground, all right? And you live it till Jesus comes back. That means you're going to be up here and I'm going to be down there. It's in my body. Now watch this. I'm not talking about you're going to be there, but your body's going to be there. Amen? Now what? When this body, by Jesus said, when he comes back, that body's going to rise and you're going to be alive and go up together to meet the Lord in the air together at that time. That's a mystery. That's a mystery. I like what Dr. Curtis Hudson said one time. He was preaching to a bunch of homeless people. You know, they believe you can lose your salvation. You can be saved, and then you lose it, and you get saved again. And he said, I am so looking forward to the resurrection. And he said, when we all go up together, I'm going to look up to some of my uh, homeless people and say, I told you so. <laughs> Amen. God's good, brother. And when you realize... Thank God we're all different, but we're all going to be raised. And this resurrection body is going to be immortal. Immortal means that which shall never pass away. Now, go with me to Revelation chapter 2. I know I'm a little long, but I don't care. I want to show you something. I hope you don't care. If you do, talk to the Lord about it. No, don't tell on me. Revelation chapter 21. I want you to listen now. I love this. In verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I saw the, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Now I want you to watch them. What are the results of the changed body? It's that every, the Bible says that there be no more. And it, it, you would do good if you got in the Bible and studied Revelation 21 here, the all no mores of the Bible. No more sickness, no more death, no more pain. All's going to be good. Amen. Wouldn't it be good just one more time to wake up and feel good and fresh, brand new? Anymore, I get up and um, have to roll over, you know. Used to, I, when I was young, I woke up, jumped out of bed, got in the shower and took off. And now I roll over and uh, you can hear the bones are cracking and they're carrying on and lift myself up on the side of the bed and get up and about 30 minutes later I'm in the shower and, and you know get revived do you know how to revive that old body get in the shower and get you the hottest shower you can get and just before you get out turn it on the cold <laughs> I'm serious liven up your body I'm ready to go now buddy I got me I told you about my vitamin that I take now I got me a vitamin man I take me a vitamin I take that thing I'm ready to go for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll start all over again. Now, folks, I want to tell you something. Here's, here's the whole point of this sermon. 
if you're not saved today, the Bible says you'll die forever. It's a continual death. It's a continual decaying. It's a continual pain. It's a continual sorrow. That's why that I want to preach every chance I get any way I can that Jesus is a Savior. If you'll accept Him as your Savior, He gives you a brand new body one day. A brand new life. And you live it. I was reading and studying as a young Christian and the Bible says that we'll worship the Lord forever and ever and ever. And I said, now Lord, am I going to be kneeling all the time? Am I going to be reading the Bible all the time and, and worshiping you and praying all the time? And is that all I'm going to be doing in heaven? And you know, it, it sort of uh, wait a minute. Is that the best? And then I got in the Bible and said, that's wonderful, but that ain't all we're going to be doing. Amen? We're going to be living. Just an ordinary Christian life throughout all eternity, and God is a point of our worship forever. And all the blessings of our life is from Him. I was sharing with this man I was talking to yesterday about how good God had been to me. And he made this statement to me. He said, I don't understand. I've watched you all these years and God has been so good to you and blessed you. And he said, I have worked so hard and I don't have anything. He said, I don't understand it. And I said, the only thing I can tell you is God is my father. And he blesses me. And he takes care of me. Amen. I hope God is your father. Because he's where the blessings come from. It is some, he's the fountain of youth that we've all been looking for. And we won't have it for long. Heavenly Father, would you bless each one who's here today. Father, there's no better time than right now for anybody on the face of this earth still living to call upon the name of the Lord for salvation of the soul, body, and spirit. Watch over, take care of us until we see you face to face and all our loved ones that's gone on before us and especially our Savior when we see him soon and have a glorified body to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.